Where and when are words? I realize this doesn't probably sound like the most intelligible question at first pass, but I want to ask you again. Where and when are words? Are words merely things in space and time like other things presumably are? If the question itself doesn't sound intelligible, if it doesn't make sense to you when I ask you where and when are words, just try to ask, why am I talking that way? What is the point of all of this? Let me see if I can raise a couple of further questions and then hopefully make clear why I'm using this rather odd question. First, Irving Goffman in a very interesting book called Strategic Interaction, which is a book on spy and espionage behavior, he writes, of all of the things of this world, information is the hardest to guard because it can be stolen without removing it. This is going in the right direction. Yes, words are not in space and time. They're not. They're not subject to entropy in the way that the rest of the physical thermodynamic world is. Take our good friend Alfred Korzybski, the founder of the General Semantics Institute. One of the exercises I sometimes do with students is I will take all of the students uh, and I will select a row from class and I will have each of the students in that row say the name Alfred Korzybski. So one student will say it, and another student will say it, and another student will say it, and pretty soon about eight students have said the name Alfred Korzybski. When they've done that, it's different rates, different pitches, different people spoke at different times. It, there's a sequential order. There's so many differences. And despite all of that, the same word was said. How is that possible? Where is the sameness of that word? This is what Nietzsche means when Nietzsche says that a word is a lie. Yes, it's a principle of repeatability. When Kenneth Burke, in Rhetoric of Religion, tries to describe, or I think very well describes, words as a kind of spiritual transcendence, this is what he's trying to get us to understand. That word users, humans, uh, we're not in space and time the way that other things are. We're gatherings of space and time. The words that you're listening to right now, where are they? Are they in your head? Are they on the computer screen? Are they in my mouth? Where are they? To say that they're somewhere, specifically, I mean, unless it's a signature, and even there, you know, the semioticians would come out and say, well, what do you mean by a signature, and is there an indexical level to language? And again, all this gets very complicated. But I think we can stick with the basic principle that the where and when of words is a very different where and when than the kinds of things that seem to be, at least by our visual sense or our other senses, seem to be things within a space and time. Words, they get us out of the here and now. They help us fall into history. They let us anticipate days that are not yet here. In, in many ways, a word that cannot be repeated is not a word at all. A symbol that cannot be repeated is not a symbol. That's what we mean by a symbol. It's something of the past. It's something that includes the future. If you can't imagine the reinvocability of that symbol, it's not real. You know, it's not really a symbol. And I think this very complicated point can be summed up, or if we really want to cut to the chase about all this, is it's to really raise a critical question about what does it mean to be human. The you who you can think about when you think of you was not a biologically born you. The you that you can think about is a form of spiritual transcendence. You're more than who you think you are. You're older than you think you are. The words you are using may be the oldest things that you have come in contact with today. Words are not in the space and time of the other senses. Well, I, I hope, for whatever it's worth, that some of this makes sense. When we try to ask the question, where and when are words, it's not an ill-conceived question. If the question doesn't make sense, I think this is a good thing to, to ask, why doesn't it make sense? Is there a whole horizon of intelligibility that's not open to people who can't see the sense of that question? I think the more that people really want to engage in 
uh, a thoroughgoing understanding of language, a thoroughgoing understanding of what is symbolicity. They need to deal with the where character and the when character of symbols and of words without getting the range of the space and time that humans are in will always miss it. Uh, I look around this room and I see furniture, I see chairs, I see television sets and other things that look like they're just in the room. I'm sure that someone else could look at me and just see me as one more object in the room. But that would really be an undue truncation of what it is to be human. To be human is to be a word user, which is to be more than here and now. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.